Premium Rush, a movie set in the busy city of Manhattan revolving our protagonist Wiley, an ex-law student who rides on the edge by having a breakless bike. One day, he has a delivery that is so valuable that a corrupt cop who needs money begins to chase Wiley throughout the city to get the envelope before it's delivered. Directed by David Kamen, starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt, this movie was released in USA on 26 August 2012. I'm going to analyse cinematography and editing for this movie. Mitchell Amundsen was the DOP for Premium Rush. You may recognise him from popular movies he has done such as Transformers and Wanted. Let's go in depth for cinema. Cinematography. When talking about cinematography, let's talk about equipment used for making the cinematography possible. The movie is mostly shot in the busy streets of NYC. Cranes were used for high angle shots that can depict how crowded it is. The cranes also allow the camera to track the subject from a high angle as it moves through the streets. Steady cams are also used for places that are tight, such as Security Carrier HQ, the school compounds, in the police department, in the gambling dens, in the departmental store, Nima's house and many other places. In this shot, you can see that the camera is tracking Nima as she is walking up the stairs. There's then a match cut to her son, both shot done using Steadicam with the cameraman going up the stairs. In Premium Rush, vehicles are used to replace dollies as it will be difficult to set up long tracks on the street. Let's take this shot for example. There are no dolly tracks but the camera has a dolly-like movement. It is taken with a camera mounted on a vehicle. Premium Rush also had shot taken using a helicopter or a camera drone. This particular shot was taken from a bird eye view to show how big the park is before using analytical editing to go closer to the characters. The cinematographer uses camera techniques to enhance the story effect. Camera angles can denote power. Take note on how Amundsen changed the angle in this shot. Monday is in a sticky situation but he suddenly had an ingenious idea. The camera starts with a high angle shot of him denoting weakness but slowly moves to a low angle. This camera movement tells us that the situation has changed and he has the upper hand now. The cinematographer uses zooms or tighter shots to enhance the intensity of the story. Take this shot for example. The camera zooms into Wiley's eyes to show his great concentration as a wrong decision made will endanger others or even cost him his life. In the following shot, the camera zooms in, denoting POV of Nima, and also showing that the delivery of the important envelope has been altered. This shot allows the audience to empathize with Nima. The camera zooms into the bag to show that the bag is of importance as it is carrying a lot of money. Amundsen also uses an abundance of camera tracking. During this chase scene, the shot tracks the two characters before stopping at the sign. This shot was used to foreshadow the event of the cop chasing Wiley again. The typical shot reverse shot can be seen. You can see the difference in composition of these three shots from the same scene. The tighter shot denotes tension while the wider shot is more relaxed. Alright, enough of cinematography, let's move on to editing. The editing for Premium Rush is ingenious. They creatively used many techniques in editing that made the movie very interesting. One will definitely recall the use of CGI effect to recreate New York City in 3D GPS-like format. The effect was used to show a travel over a great distance and can be considered as an elliptical editing. Can you imagine how long the movie will be if they shoot the entire journey the characters made? The effect was also used as a transition to the next scene at a far away location. It was also used to transit between the scenes of one character to another. In this shot, from Wiley to Nima. Even the beginning and the ending of the movie used the effect. Take note on the similarities between the two scenes. Moving on, reoccurring image can be found in Premium Rush. There was a shot of the taxi top light lighting up and Wiley is in barely avoiding the taxi's door. 20 minutes into the film, we see the top light of another taxi lighting up again. The audience will then record the shot at the beginning and anticipate for the cop to crash into the taxi after getting tricked by the cunning Wiley. Also, Premium Rush uses the technique of going back into time to create an interesting form of flashback and parallel editing. Let's compare these two scenes. You'll see a same shot used and how it was edited so that the other side of the call will only be revealed later in the film. This breaks the conventional type of parallel editing whereby typical movies cut between two places simultaneously. However, this parallel editing is 40 minutes apart. 
now isn't that interesting. Well, lock, your alma mater summons. 116th Street entrance, law school, main office, drop us in Chinatown. Premium Rush is an action film and has fast cuts during the chase scene. Here is an example of the fast cuts. Also, take note on how they use the passing by cars as hidden jump cuts. As this chase scene continues under the bridge, the shot size starts to vary to show a perspective of space. This perspective intensifies the scene as Bobby is seen getting closer and closer to Wiley. But of course, Wiley manages to escape from Bobby with his trusty steel frame fixed gear no brake fixie. Considering the difficulty of shooting in the busy streets whereby moving cars are the props to achieve that level of cinematography is impressive. The editing is also magnificent. This goes to show you do not need famous editors for a well-edited movie. So Premium Rush, a great movie to watch if you want 90 minutes of non-stop action. This is Caleb Lee, signing off.